Hi there, Tess here, and I want to continue this really um, wonderful conversation that we've been having about bowels and bowel motions and and uh, detoxification organs. It's really fantastic to be able to bring this to you. So um, continuing on from our last video on the bowel as a detoxification organ, you will remember I brought out the Bristol stool chart for you and I mentioned to you that the number four, the sausage over here, is the perfect poo. It's a perfect number two. Okay, and the further you get away from that, towards the rabbit droppings and towards the gravy over there, the more unhealthy that is. And especially keep in mind how I'm talking about this is on a regular um, basis. If you produce that as a poo regularly, fantastic. But if you produce one of these guys or up there regularly, not so good. So let's have a look today at what that actually means. What does it mean to make the perfect poo? So I would call that a normal poo. Right, so the first thing we're going to look at, oh, I've actually named it the seven S's of the perfect poo. So the first thing I want to talk about with you is the shape of the, um, of the stool that comes out. So I don't know if you know, but let's bring out this little picture for you. The shape of your lower bowel over there, that's called the sigmoid colon, um, is actually an S shape. So, you know, just before your stool is actually excreted, before you make a poo, it sits over here, right? So guess what the perfect shape of a poo is? Yep, it's an S shape. Okay, you almost want to, I always want to, um, I look at it in... Like as you know, have you watched people do a soft serve cone? There you go. There's your visual. Okay, that's what it want you want it to look like—a soft serve cone shape. <laughs> and it's the shape of the lower intestine, so you don't want it to be in little bits and pieces. Okay, that's not perfect and uh, or lumpy or mushy or watery at all. So also keep in mind if there's persistent loose stools, like if you just just short of diarrhea most of the time, you might want to go and see a health professional, go see your doctor about that because it can actually it could indicate something like celiac disease or yeah, I don't know, parasite parasitic um, infections, all sorts of things. And then the other thing to think about is if your stool is like ribbon or pencil thin narrow, um, it can actually indicate a bowel obstruction. All right, and one of the, it could be a spasm, but it could also be that you've got impacted feces. You've got actually got poos stuck on the inside of your bowel and it's lining the inside of your bowel and constricting the passage of your, um, of your stool. Okay, now in terms of that, I recommend a series of colonic um, hydration. So... Yeah, colon hydrotherapy. Very good. I, I recommend that strongly, actually. Um, I think we could all have a series of that. <clears throat> but the narrow stool can also indicate for you more than bowel obstruction or more than impacted feces or, or spasm. It could actually indicate some more um, serious conditions, something like uh, an enlarged prostate in men, but it could also indicate that there might be a tumor. So again, it's one of those things that we want to definitely sort out before it gets to be a problem. The second is, is shape, uh, a shade. I've just, just done shape. The shade, the color of the poo, and that is due to um, the color of your poo is due to the action of bilirubin, uh, bacteria on bilirubin. And uh, bilirubin is a breakdown product of your red blood cells, okay, of old red blood cells. So that color is actually a medium brown color, right? Medium brown. It's not dark, it's not light, it's a medium brown color. So some other colors in your poo may indicate some health concerns for you. So if you have persistent white, pale, or gray poo, it may be as a result of antacid use, uh, which we know we should not be using more than you know, actually should not be using, but it says on the box usually, I think, no more than two weeks. It could indicate a lack of bile, 
So it could indicate some issues with the gallbladder, a blocked, possibly a blocked bile duct. It could indicate pancreatic issues. It could indicate liver concerns. Yellow poo. Okay, now this is, again, there's always concomitant other factors involved here yeah, and other signs and symptoms as well, but often a gallbladder problem or also it could be a parasitic infection, specifically giardia, which we find in in um, stagnant water and, you know, um, water tanks. I often find people come here to me with giardia infection and they've they've got farm water and water tanks. Um you can have green poo now that could indicate food coloring you know green m ms <laughs> uh leafy green food or it could also be a result of of bile of antibiotic use or also iron supplementation could indicate it could be a, a green poo a pinkish color in your poo may indicate food coloring but also maybe foods like beets or even lots of tomato or cranberries it can also indicate a bacterial infection the one i've got i want you to be aware of to the two i want you to be aware of if you see blood in the stool so that's bright red blood now that's bleeding that's bleeding in your lower intestinal tract so that could be as a result of a bleeding ulcer it could be it could be hemorrhoids it could be as a result of anal fissures or some tearing. Um, it could be colitis. It could be Crohn's disease. Uh, but bright red bleeding consistently, have it sorted out. Okay, you go to a doctor. The other bleeding is when you see a black tarry kind of stool. And that means that there's bleeding higher up in the um, gastrointestinal tract. Okay, so that could be in the small intestine or the stomach or even as far up as the esophagus here. Um, again, ulcers or gastritis. Certain medications can cause black stools, um, ADs, antidepressants, or antidiarrheal medication can cause black stools. Some supplements may cause it or even something like a, if you've eaten a pack of black licorice, you could have um, black tarry stools. <clears throat> the next S is the softness. So you want your stools to be soft, not hard. Like they're difficult to pass, okay? So think the consistency of, I'm just going to come back to that soft serve slash toothpaste slash Play-Doh, sort of in between there. So it's a soft stool, not hard. Um, the size of it, if you think about producing that little soft serve it can be up to about in the old language I guess a foot long or 30 centimeters up to 45 centimeters somewhere around there and also the shape of it like the diameter of it you know sort of two and a half to five centimeters it's when it's ribbon thin like that consistently that we've you know we've spoken about we might have some obstruction there and the other part is the volume of the actual poo that you're producing gosh you don't want to clog up the toilet okay you don't want to feel like you've lost weight after you've passed your 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 stools and um, again we're talking about persistently and consistently producing these voluminous sizey um, stools not healthy for you not good go have it checked out by a doctor the smell Okay, so a healthy poo smells okay. It's kind of a natural smell. It's not totally repulsive. And, um, you know, there's no need to open windows and, and, and go to lengths to get rid of the, the smell. That, so healthy is quite a natural smell. Um, but unhealthy poos can be incredibly stinky. Okay, so usually and often we find that in people that have a, ver a diet that's very high in processed foods. Yeah, um, meat, animal, animal fats, like if you've got a, you know, massive big um, steak every second night kind of thing. Poor food combining, the, a malabsorption disorder. It can indicate celiacs or Crohn's or pancreatitis and a few other more um, 
serious conditions as well. So yeah, poo doesn't smell that bad. Sink or float? Now there's a little bit of a controversy around this one. The Chinese believe that floaters are quite healthy and and again if you're eating a diet if your diet actually contains a lot of fiber um, and even fat as well you might find a more floaty kind of stool going on but floaties can also indicate an infection it could indicate that there's issues with your fat metabolism gallbladder liver kind of situation again or high mucus inflammatory conditions as well and so what would I say it, a normal poo would look like? Well, it sinks like the Titanic, nice and slowly. It's not a cannonball splash, okay? Just on that, when, you, when you've got um, poos that splash and sink um, quickly, it might indicate some malabsorption as well, but it can also indicate someone who is doing a lot of heavy metal detoxification so keep that in mind easy like the Titanic straining is the next S so a healthy poo is actually quite easy to pass you're not going to pop a vein one easy nice little swoosh all right you're not going to get red in the face you're not going to sit there for um, you know 20 minutes trying to push out something that is just painful and hurtful and you you know straining hard that's yeah, that's not healthy and also you'll feel like you've evacuated fully like it's a job well done it feels complete and on that as well is on that point is if your poos are the last s is the stickiness of it actually the it's going to come out nice and easy and if it's very sticky, it's going to cost you money because you're going to go through rolls and rolls of toilet paper to wipe clean, to clean off stickiness. It's not what we want. Okay, you want to use one, two, three little blocks of toilet paper and that's it. And the reason for that is because your bowel produces enough liquid and mucus through the goblet cells to actually facilitate an easy passage and a formed stool. Nothing that's sticky and pasty like that. Okay, it's costing you money. So the last thing I just want to talk about quickly is the fact that uh, it's on regularity. So what is a regular poo? I'm going to tell you what I think is not a regular poo. That's if someone says to me, I go once a week or once every two weeks. Oh my gosh, you know, we've spoken about the auto intoxication that takes place when the body keeps its waste products inside. It's just toxic for the whole body. You can watch my previous little video on that. I believe a healthy poo, a healthy regular stool is a daily bowel motion. Okay, and that to me is common sense. Now there's, we always talk about whatever is regular for you is okay and it's between once every three days to three times a day. I believe a daily bowel motion is ideal at least once a day, up to three times a day. All right. Um, and if we can get into that habit, and I've seen it in my clinic space, of a daily, wonderful, easy to pass, perfect number four poo, it does amazing things for our health and our well-being. It supports all of our detoxification and also our other detoxification organs. It supports the liver. It supports everything else. You're going to find beautiful skin. You're going to find, you just feel healthier and better with a daily bowel motion that's that perfect number four all right so I guess my my recommendation to you is after today is go have a look it's an invitation to you go have a look at your poos look at it every day you can download if you like <clears throat> I think I'll have it on my um, naturopath uh, essential naturopath page go download that <clears throat> and at the back tongue-in-cheek very tongue-in-cheek um, I've got a little uh, diary, a stool diary that you can actually have a look at. The date, the time, the type of stool, if it's at the 1 or 2 or 7, uh, the smell, the color, if it's, you know, large, medium, or small in volume. Is it floating or splashing? Is it easy or strain? You can download that and keep a little bit of a bowel diary for your own um, awareness. So I hope you've enjoyed that and please, last bit of advice, if you notice any bleeding 
or sudden changes in your bowel motions, that's your cue to go see a, a doctor, okay? Go see someone. So thanks for joining me. Stay tuned. Next time I'm going to talk about my top tips for producing that healthy number four bowel motion. All right. See you later. Bye.